Christopher. My whole point of this episode for me was I am someone who is not as informed. Well, after Trump became officer, I was watching the news every day, and it just, like, it made me overwhelmed. Right. It scared the shit out of me. I didn't understand what was happening to the world. Like, and just, like, with, right. like you said, it's kind of like a circus. Like, there was just so much information it's, being it's thrown non-stop. all the time. It's nonstop. Yeah. So I kind of took myself out of everything and kind of, like, it became so overwhelming, I just couldn't watch the news anymore. I couldn't, like, think about things. So what can I do to, like, inform myself? What can I do that's not just, like... Because the thing about ra- the new shows is, like, we're all in it for yeah. ratings, too. So, you yeah. know, so, like, it's, all, it's, all it's, all, it's still TV, but how do I get the best, the real? Where do I find... <laughs> if Where do you find the real? I, I, you gotta go to the you gotta go to the, the, the papers, right? Okay. There's still... Newspapers still are the place to go. I, I think the New York Times the New York and the Washington Post... Are, are fantastic, mm-hmm. and even the Wall Street Journal, which tends to have a more conservative bent in their editorial uh, writing, their, their news section is pretty much down the middle. Um, I, I read, I read the New York Times pretty much every day. Mm-hmm. I read uh, the Washington Post. I read Politico, which is an online website. Mm-hmm. I like to go to Five Thirty Eight because I like the polls and the numbers and everything like that. Um, and, and I think those those sources are, are fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, there are. Decent conservative people out there that have different viewpoints. Well, you know the conservative mind, so like because you work so well yeah. around them. What can we do? What we have to do is is we have to defeat what's in Washington right now, which I don't believe is conservative. Okay, what I believe it's a cult of personality. I think it has. Uh, I think the Republican Party and the conservative movement have suborned themselves to Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a time when there was Republicans who I might have had a difference of opinion with on how government should operate, but we were all fundamentally trying to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. And I think there's still a lot of Republicans like that. They are so afraid of Donald Trump and his base, and the base itself is afraid. Mm-hmm. You know, They're afraid that the world has passed them by. Yeah. Right? The America that they once knew has passed them by. And for some of those people, that's a very legitimate fear. Yeah, it's like, not I'm something like, like you know, gay, I, black I don't. Man, it's like yeah, yeah, but there's I, a lot to think it's about. Not <laughs> all, it's not like, all about race, although I do think that there's been a lot of race baiting from the right the last, yeah. even before Trump. Um, it's not all about that, but there are are people, you know, living in you know the Rust Belt, who you know whose father worked in a factory and they thought they'd work in a factory and mm-hmm. they were working in a factory and now they're not working in a factory. Mm-hmm. And they're blaming maybe you for it because somebody's telling them to blame you. Yeah. And, you know, the president's coming out and saying, we're going to bring those jobs back. The thing about manufacturing in America is that manufacturing has never been better in America. Really? We're just not using as many people because, ev- like everything else, it's automated. Yeah. So Technology the economy has thing. changed, yeah. and it, there's real fear that people are going to have kids who have worse lives than they had. And, and that they're not going to be able to make it. They're never going to be able to retire. And that the American dream is dying. And Trump comes in and he scapegoats that fear on other people. He mm-hmm. says it's Mexico's fault. He says it's the liberals' fault. And there are uh, about 32% of Americans believe that. Yeah. Some of them believe it for the wrong reasons. Some of them believe it out of true fear. So what we have to do and what you have to do is you have to educate yourself, educate your, your viewers, your friends, mm-hmm. your family, and get them out to vote. Um, and, and, and we have to defeat these people that are, are really not conservative, and mm-hmm. they are not what Republicans were 10, 15 years ago. They are the party of Trump, and it is, it is, it, he needs a proper check. The, the Constitution always anticipated that we could have a tyrannical president because mm-hmm. the presidency has such power to yeah. it. What they didn't anticipate was a Congress that would roll over and play dead to the tyrannical president. You know, uh, the art- Congress is Article One. The President's Article Two, and Article One is supposed to be the superior branch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Madison and, and Hamilton wrote in the Federalist Papers that ambition needs to counteract ambition. So the President's trying to grab power, but the Congress has got ambition to hold power too. They would counteract each other, and neither one of them would have too much power. They'd be a check and a balance on each other. Right now, we have no checks and balances. Mm-hmm. In fact, the only thing that really has held is the courts. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, you know, federal court judges are appointed for life. And, and while I don't really know that I like that, I was like, that's kind of but <laughs> they, they are appointed for life. I used life? to clerk in federal district court, ju- court, and my federal district court judge told me a joke. He said, what's the difference between God and a federal district court judge? Mm-hmm. God does not think he's a federal district court judge. 
Okay, so these guys take their power seriously. <laughs> yeah, and they they think that their power is a check on the other two branches, and mm -hmm. it is, and that's what the Constitution intended. So right now that branch is holding, but the longer you have a Congress that's not willing to put a check on the president, and he's putting in judges who are going to just rubber stamp everything he does, mm -hmm. the worse we're going to be. So this election that's coming up in, uh, in November is vitally important. It is. Will you, hear, will you say that again? It is vitally. Wh which camera you want me to look into? I'll, I'll look into that. That's it's yeah. vitally important. It's. It's vitally important. And one more time uh, for the cheap seats in the back. Hey, it's vitally important. <laughs> uh, so don't forget oh, to vote. Dope, he's don't dope. forget to vote. Yeah. Uh, it, it's vitally important. And, and you know, th there's been too many times in our lifetime where people say, this is the most important election of my lifetime. This is an important election. Because if, I mean, I if, feel it. if the <laughs> Democrats don't take some power, yeah. they don't take the House, um, this guy's going to be emboldened. And yeah. he's going to do whatever he wants. And this Republican Congress is going to just let him. And who knows where we'll be in two years. I think that um, the best thing that could happen for him is the Democrats take over Congress and that he becomes the pragmatic New Yorker he was before mm -hmm. he got co-opted by some idiots. Um, and he starts making deals on infrastructure. Maybe yeah. we could fix the Herald Exchange here in New York City, <laughs> you know, do some other things, right? Uh, and I think that that's a possibility, yeah. actually. Because um, um, he likes to make deals. And he hasn't been able to make deals because the right doesn't want to make a deal. Yeah. Um, so but they have control. So the Democrats take control of Congress. They're not going to, uh, you know, I don't want them to impeach him. Mm -hmm. I think if you impeach, try to impeach him, you'll never remove him because you need 67 votes in the Senate to remove him. You'll never get that. Yeah. Um, but I think I have called it the Princess Bride strategy, mm -hmm. right? You, you know, at the end of the Princess Bride, where Wesley's laying on the bed and he's barely alive and the prince walks in. And, and he starts threatening the prince, and the prince goes, so we'll fight to the death? And he goes, no, not to the death, to the pain. <laughs> I'm going to cut off your finger. I'm going to cut off your Ooh. toe. I think the Democrats get into Congress, and they get control of Congress. If they try to cut off his head, yeah. like Wesley, they're going to stand up, and they're going to fall down. Yeah. If they threaten to cut off a pinky, a toe, he will leave on his own at the end of two years. And we'll have investigations into things that are really going wrong in this country, like the Department of the Interior, the, the EPA administrator who was spending $37 million on, like, travel. I mean, it's just all sorts of corruption that has been occurring that normally Congress would investigate. Yeah. This Congress yeah. has not investigated it. It's so it's, 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 uh, it's very important that we have a proper check, and it's very important that the Democrats – don't overreach. You can't just impeach somebody because you don't like his policies. Yeah. The voters put him there, yeah. and you got to respect the voters that put him there. But you can put the proper check on him, and you can make his life miserable so it's not fun anymore, and yeah. he just goes. Like the prince did. He just, just submitted, got tied up, and then the guy fell down on the floor. <laughs> he never really had any power. Democrats are going to think they have power. Mm -hmm. They don't. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a, it's, they have a check. They have the ability to check, and it's very important that they do it right. Thank you so much. It really has been an honor to talk to hey. you. You like hope I helped. You know, you are very well spoken, but you are very you have a good heart. My, I guess my thing in like working in media, and the farther I move, it's easy to lose yourself, and I would, like it's easy to talk to like singers and fashion people, but like to someone who works in politics and you still have a good soul, it's an honor. Hey, anytime. Thank you so man. much for being here. Thank you. Thank you.